David asks, is there a mechanism to prevent people who send in a mail ballot from also going in on election day and casting another vote in person? Yeah, it's uh, uh, something that we've you know, paid attention to for ever since we started the system. Um, and in a world of, of modern technology, it's even easier now to uh, keep track of that. And there have been cases, I think it's, a, I can count them on a single finger in the last election cycle where someone tried to do exactly that. They get caught almost invariably and it's potentially a class C felony up to five years. I mean, if it's intentional, trying to cast a second vote. Now, I think despite the overheated rhetoric sometimes of people on both sides, the incentive to commit individual voting fraud is about as non-existent as you know life on the planet Mercury, I would imagine. If you, a county clerk once asked me, um, Phil, have you ever wondered why uh, crooks don't counterfeit pennies? And I said, no, I never had asked that question. And she goes, you know, Phil, if you're willing to risk the jail time and do the crime, you're going to counterfeit 20s and 100s. You're not going to counterfeit pennies. And to try to, to, to purloin even one vote puts people at risk. To do it at, at 10 or 100 is exponentially and then some uh, more apt to be caught and exposed. And each one of those is a crime, by the way. And where's the incentive? Um, I, quite honestly, if you want to try to steal or mess with an election, there's far, far smarter ways to, you know, to do it. Uh, not that I'm encouraging that. So it's, uh, um, uh, it's the kind of thing that, that uh, it's always possible. Um, uh, you can't ever disprove a negative, but the existence of that kind of mischief and fraud even attempted is really at the vanishing point, not just in our system, but I would argue across, across the country. And I think we're learning that. We're getting a civics lesson right now about uh, just uh, how um, uh, rare, extraordinarily rare, uh, even the attempt of it is, much less uh, an organized uh, success. Well, let's jump right off that question to the next one from another reader who, uh, who understandably wonders about uh, the flip side of that coin, the president of the United States, who uh, believes that many of these votes are fraudulent because they weren't for him, he's threatening lawsuits. He says, oh, go to the Supreme Court. So how can he sue? What legal avenues does he have? What would he sue over? That's a great question. Um, um, you know, anybody can bring a lawsuit up to the president of the United States. Um, it's up to our judges and our judicial system to to throw out the ones that have no merit, to look at them and see whether there's cause and reason to believe it's worth even having a hearing over. Um, so I'm not surprised, I'm disappointed, but I'm not surprised. Um, and uh, this notion though, uh, you know, if I were Amy Comey, Comey Barrett right now and whatever you think of her as a, as, as a judge, um, uh, you know, if, if it's been the first year of, of Trump's term, I don't think there'd be the cloud over her head than there is having been pushed through with four days before the election. But uh, the president acting as if she's going to pay him back for the favor that he gave her to appoint her. Um, this is uh, this is just so unprecedented in American politics to talk in those kinds of terms about uh, the judicial branch of government. And uh, I, I doubt that, I haven't seen anything, and I'm not an attorney, but I haven't seen anything up to now that I think would even be allowed to proceed to any kind of hearing, much less a decision in the president's favor. You gotta present evidence that a, that a wrong has been committed. And to allege that you should stop votes in one place because they're going in the wrong direction, but boy, you got to count every vote somewhere else because boy, we like what we're seeing, like in Arizona, which might flip to Trump though narrowly, and that would probably be a recount too, is just on the face of it uh, uh, such a glaring contradiction that how's it how are you going to argue that with a straight face? And well, tell, me, uh, tell me if I'm wrong. I, I I read today that the majority of the court rulings that had uh, progressives worried going into this election had to do with states counting ballots that had been received after election day. 
And the interesting thing is that the ballots that are currently being counted now that could flip Georgia and Pennsylvania tonight were not received after election day. They oh, were received, exactly before, right. were received before election day, right. which, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it the case that he doesn't have a lot of legal precedent to stop the counting of ballots that were received prior to election day? Well, I, th I think he has none for, for precisely that reason, but there's another very subtle um, reason too that, and here I'm gonna, in a strange way, uh, uh, agree with, with people like Justice Roberts and even some of the uh, uh, Justice Gorsuch. The Constitution for all its flaws, and this may be one of them, delegates a lot of authority to the states for their election system. And over the decades, states have done just unspeakably awful things to discriminate against African Americans, for example, with literacy and poll tests and, and, and the like. And, and uh, disenfranchised felons, for example, after they've uh, served their time, which is just reprehensible. But the jurisprudence that the conservatives in the court have embraced so far is that they don't like federal judges stepping in and finding a federal constitutional basis to say to a state, I'm sorry, you said received by election day, I'm going to say in the era of COVID as a federal judge, you ought to let postmarks fly. That has not worked. But in both Pennsylvania and North Carolina, it was a state entity that made that decision. And in some states, the legislature has done it. Ohio, for example, has this system, and a number of other states do as well. So I think that, if anything, these recent decisions that a lot of Democrats have gotten really upset about actually telegraph that the court is going to say, look, if the state decided that's what they're going to do, not a federal judge, but the state, we're going to defer to the state's judgment about that. Um, so I think that it's a Hail Mary pass and, and then some. Um, uh, if I were in, you know, I'm not surprised given how he's positioned himself all through this campaign about mail-in ballots, he's going to do everything he can to cast doubt on them uh, because they may very well be part of what historians look back on and say played a critical role in ousting him from office. Uh, but uh, I think the court is going to have a real hard time, particularly the Supreme Court, in accepting the argument that somehow there's a federal constitutional you know, principle at stake when an individual state decides we're not going to have postmarks, we're going to instead, or, or received by, we're going to instead let postmarks as long as it's received by a certain date. So um, that, that's my take on that one. I, I just think it's um, uh, a, a, desperate, a desperate attempt. 